In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the history of colorism in the United States, as well as explaining how colorism has affected both the film industry and the music industry, and explaining to you guys why reverse colorism is not a thing, as well as explaining to you guys why reverse colorism won't be a thing in this United States of America. So if you're interested in that topic, keep on watching. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to Ella Pastoral. And as you guys saw by the thumbnail, the title, and the intro, today we're talking about colorism and its supposed mystery twin known as reverse colorism. But before I can really debunk the existence of reverse colorism, I really want to explain to you guys what colorism is and how it has affected black americans in the united states okay so before i talk about the history of colorism in america i just want to give you guys this basic definition colorism according to google is prejudice or discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone typically among people of the same ethnic group or racial group and as you can see the example they have here is colorism within the black community has been a serious emotional and psychological battle just like how most of the issues relating to the black community can date all the way back to slavery, colorism and how it has affected black Americans also dates all the way back to slavery. So the reason why colorism has affected and caused such a major divide in the black community all starts with how slave masters treated their black slaves. Due to the fact that those with lighter skin began to be associated with having white ancestry, slave masters would typically treat those with lighter skin better than those who were 100% dark. And this was just a sad reality of the situation. Those who were dark were typically known as field slaves, while those who had lighter skin began to be known as house slaves. Due to the fact that those with darker skin were treated completely different than their lighter skin counterparts, there started to be some animosity between these two groups. And this is, I feel like, the beginning of colorism in the United States. The difference in treatment between lighter skin slaves and darker skin slaves can even be seen in the monetary aspect of how these slaves were sold which is crazy because now we're gonna be talking about how black people were priced based on their skin tone. Lighter skinned slaves were literally more expensive than darker skinned slaves because they were seen as more attractive. And literally even after slavery end, we can literally see how lighter skinned individuals were still seen as more valuable than darker skinned individuals, not only by white people, but also other black people as well. You know that colorism was still pretty bad after slavery by looking at the phenomenon of the paperback test. The paper bag test, I feel like, can easily be explained by looking at this meme for Family Guy. And as you can see, those with lighter skin were able to pass through the gate, while those who were seen as too dark were not allowed to pass. And that's exactly what the paper bag test was. But what made the paper bag test especially egregious was that it was done to make sure that darker skinned black people were not allowed to be in these high class, sophisticated areas where the lighter skinned black people were. And it was especially egregious because even if you were high class yourself, highly educated as a dark skinned black person, they wouldn't allow you to join because you were not the right shade. And literally this just shows you that reverse colorism isn't a thing because you don't see stuff like this existing for light skinned people. You don't see a reverse paper bag test where you have to be darker than a paper bag in order to get into an organization. But this kind of stuff affects dark skinned people still in the 21st century. And what is especially egregious is that even if you look at the organizations that still exist in 2023, that are supposed to be about sisterhood and serving the community, have histories in colorism. I believe that it was this sorority, I'm gonna put them on the screen for you guys, that literally had a very colorist past where they did not allow dark skinned black women to join their organization. And I believe that it was this sorority that I'm putting on the screen for you guys that literally had to be created as a response to dark skinned women not being allowed in sororities. And if you look at the history of these divine nine sororities, you can even see that colorism is rampant there. And these communities are supposed to be uplifting the community. So imagine how harsh the colorism was in the past. But I cannot emphasize enough how light skin is seen as the beauty standard and as something you need to elevate yourself towards. Like I know in the United States, skin bleaching is not as prevalent as it is in let's say West Africa or the, the islands or whatever, but we still have bleaching products. This Twitter user right here brought to my attention that Ambi is literally a bleaching product. And I literally did not know that. 
this product that you can easily find in Target is readily available for you to use to bleach your skin. And literally, it's so sad because bleaching your skin can literally cause you to have cancer. And literally just a, a, a random, random carcinogen is just sitting in your local Target ready for you to use. But do you see any products like this? A reverse ambi that will make your skin darker? and will literally affect you and give you cancer? No, because everybody knows that you don't want to be darker, you want to be lighter. So the existence of reverse colorism is literally not a thing. And light-skinned women literally know that they benefit from light skin privilege and benefits from colorism because of how they brand themselves and how proud they are to be light-skinned. Like look at, for example, light-skinned Keisha and look at Lotto. Guys, before Lotto decided to rebrand herself, she was literally proud to call herself a mulatto. A mulatto refers to someone who has ancestry from like a white slave master and a black slave. So sis is literally proud to be light-skinned and she literally knows that being light-skinned affords her with certain privileges that her darker skin counterparts would not have. I mean, do you know how crazy it is to literally call yourself mulatto? Like, you literally don't even have to look at celebrities to know that light-skinned women benefit from colorism. Literally, these girls that I went to high school with would have Instagram handles like Blazian underscore Keisha or light skin Jane. Like, guys, if we're being so serious, we know at least one light-skinned person whose entire Instagram or Snapchat brand is the fact that they're light-skinned. light skin privilege exists, guys don't don't be acting like it doesn't exist and the place where i feel like colorism is the most rampant slash the most accessible to see colorism in full play is in hollywood like we all know the situation that happened with dark skin aunt viv being replaced by light skin aunt viv and even the show making fun of the fact that they replaced their dark skin mom with a light skin lady like nobody was going to notice but an example of this that i feel like not a lot of people mention is how they did the same thing with my wife and kids where they got rid of the dark skin daughter and magically replaced her with her lighter skin counterpart like we weren't supposed to notice and if you just look at how dark-skinned women are portrayed in TV we're literally portrayed as aggressive mean manly like they don't portray light-skinned women like this and literally every chance that they have Hollywood as a whole entire industry will make sure that they put a light-skinned woman where a dark-skinned black woman should definitely be the most egregious example of this is when this lady right here I'll put a picture of her face and her name on the screen for you guys was casted to play Nina Simone a famous black woman who is known to have dark skin and what was worse is that they put prosthetics and darkened this lady's skin right here to play Nina Simone instead of hiring a dark-skinned woman who resembles Nina Simone to play Nina Simone. So please tell me how reverse colorism is a thing when Hollywood and other industries in America will literally go out of their way to not include dark-skinned women. They don't do that to light-skinned women. They don't. Like, literally look at the it girls of our cinema right now and tell me where you see dark skin as there is a reason why black panther the franchise the marvel franchise is held to such a high caliber because black panther as a franchise actually goes out of their way to include dark skin female characters you don't see that nowhere else and light-skinned women know that they benefit from colorism because they literally speak out against it Zendaya has said several times how she, as a fair-skinned black woman, benefits from colorism. Like, I love Zendaya, but she is our token black girl. They'll put her in any and everything. They also do that with Amanda Stenberg. Like, if you guys look at this book right here, it's called The Hate You Give. And you can see on the cover that that is supposed to be a dark-skinned woman with 4 hair. And they decided to cast Amanda Stenberg. So even when authors do their due diligence to include dark-skinned female characters, Hollywood is like, how about we lighten them? And Amanda Stenberg literally got into a whole controversy where people saw her as very pretentious because she says that she specifically tells directors directors not to hire her so darker skinned women can have a chance like she is the Beyonce of the acting industry and whenever she applies for a role she'll automatically get it but it isn't just Amanda Stenberg that is using her light skin privilege it is also Stormy Reed. Storm Reed posted this tweet right here talking about how she wants to play Storm 
the black marvel character whenever they do an adaptation of her story and this was one of the most tone deaf tweets i've seen in such a long time because literally as of me recording this video and at the time that she posted her tweet we're literally having conversations about hollywood taking roles that are specifically designed for dark-skinned women storm and giving them to lighter skinned women. And Stormy Reed or Storm Reed, I can't get her name straight. She literally is saying that she wants Hollywood to continue this problem by casting her a light skinned woman in a role that is specifically meant for a dark skinned woman. And literally, my mouth was so flabbergasted because I'm just like, you know we're literally having conversations advocating for representation for dark skinned women and you yourself as a light skinned woman wants to practically steal this role. It's just so tone deaf. So yet again, I'm asking, how does reverse colorism exist? But I want to go back to what sparked this conversation in the first place, and that's the existence of colorism in the music industry. Mona Leo was literally talking about how even though she is not a dark-skinned woman, she would be considered a brown-skinned woman, she still faces colorism in the music industry. And Megan James literally was like, but what about reverse colorism though? Reverse colorism doesn't exist, and let me talk about how colorism affects dark skin artists in the music industry. Personally, for me, I really love using TikTok as a social commentary tool. We all know of TikTok's influence, and we can even see laws being made about TikTok. If you're on TikTok for any length of time, you can see that there is blatant racism and even blatant colorism in terms of how TikTok treats black people. There was a scandalous report showing that TikTok literally shadow bans and pushes down darker skin creators in the algorithm. That way people don't see dark skin people a lot when they are on their For You page. Seeing as we're on the topic of the music industry, I really wanna talk about how TikTok the app has shown how colorism affects musicians. So if you guys don't know, there is this popular new it girl known as Ice Spice. She blew up from this music video right here that I'm putting on the screen for you guys. And to be honest, even though I think Ice Spice is the it girl of our generation, the music she makes is very mediocre and basic. And even though I love Ice Spice, we have to be 100% honest in the reason why she blew up. The reason why Ice Spice became such a major it girl is because of A, her curvaceous body, B, the catchiness of her songs. Like, you thought I was feeling you? That's an iconic line. And C, the most important factor, her light skin privilege. If I Spice was a random dark skinned girl on TikTok, she wouldn't have blown up as much as she did. And I know that I Spice's rise to fame can be contributed to her light skin privilege by comparing her to another TikTok famous rapper known as Flo Millie. If you are on TikTok at all, you know Flo Millie is that girl. Like in 2020, she literally was that girl. Every other video had a song lyric from one of her songs. And even to this day, her albums are still top tier. And I really feel like you guys need to check her out. But due to the fact that there is colorism and discrimination against dark skinned people, Flo Millie is not at the place that she should be. And even though Flo Millie has the talent and she gives us looks and she's just so good at everything that she does, due to the fact that there is discrimination against dark-skinned individuals, she is not pushed the way she would be pushed if she happened to be the skin tone of Ice Spice. And we can see colorism affecting other dark-skinned female artists by looking at Brie One Way and Dolce. These women make phenomenal great music and they also are talented performers. And they also give us visuals, but they are not pushed in the TikTok algorithm and overall in the music industry the way they should be. And yet again, I also want to emphasize how TikTok is making colorism a very noticeable issue. Half the filters that be trending make your skin like three shades lighter than it should be. And we don't even have to look at TikTok to know that colorism is a thing. Chris Brown repeatedly says that if you are a dark skinned woman and you want to be in his section at a club, to keep dreaming, because when he sees that you're dark, he's kicking you out today and not tomorrow. But yet again, I beg the question, how does reverse colorism exist? So now that I have given you guys some real life examples of colorism and practically debunked the notion of reverse colorism being a thing, I really want to dig deep dig extremely deep into all of the harmful stereotypes that occur because of colorism. So practically doing my research for this video, I figured out that all of the harmful stereotypes can be bogged down to this one concept. Light skin is seen as feminine 
and dark skin is seen as masculine. So the most pervasive stereotype surrounding this whole colorism debate is that light-skinned women are demure, soft, feminine creatures, and that dark-skinned men are seen as hyper-masculine, aggressive. I don't even know what other words I could describe, but y'all know how dark-skinned men are portrayed, right? Because of people's perception of light-skinned women and dark-skinned men, when you are of the opposite gender and fall into the other skin tone, you get a bunch of negative stereotypes put on you. Due to the fact that people see light-skinned women as the echelon of femininity, when you are a light-skinned man, those feminine traits are put on you just because God happened to make you light-skinned. Let me explain. Like maybe this whole reverse colorism thing could be a thing if we're talking about light-skinned men because the way y'all treat light-skinned men is low-key diabolical. For example, let's look at the whole entire Drake situation. Even before we found out that this man is crazy problematic and he has some internal issues he needs to work on personally, y'all been clowning this man. The whole entire BBL Drake thing only really exists because y'all do not like Drake. And I really feel like that is because he is a light-skinned man who makes like romantic music for girls. Because when you guys were clowning Drake and calling him BBO Drake, I really was confused because there are a lot of men who partner in the same songs as Drake and even participate in the same like soft boy music that y'all be clowning him for that also don't get the same rap. For example, Bryson Tiller, Bryson Tiller makes the same type of sappy music that Drake does, but y'all don't be clowning Bryson Tiller because that man is a darker skinned man. And because of his dark skin, he's seen as masculine and he doesn't have to overexert himself to prove himself to be masculine. While Drake, Drake gotta go fight, fight for his right to be a man, right? Especially a black man, because you know how black men are portrayed in media. And because of the fact that dark skin is seen as such a hyper masculine trait, Women who have dark skin get prosecuted, shamed, dragged, bullied. It's crazy. An example that really proved to me that you guys do not have any basic empathy towards dark skinned women and you literally see dark skinned women as men is the entire, the entire, I don't even know what to call it, the entirety of Megan Thee Stallion's career. Megan Thee Stallion is a tall, curvaceous, feminine woman. Sis literally in her free time likes to dress up as Sailor Moon. Hot pink outfits. She she looks like this. Literally, people called this woman a man. During the whole entire Tory Lane situation, people literally justified Tory Lane's violence towards Megan the Stallion by saying that she was a man. Like, do you know how harmful it is to say that to someone? Oh, you deserve to literally be abused because you are masculine. And that's not even true. Literally, Megan Thee Stallion is one of the most feminine people you'll ever see. Like, will you go tell Janae Aiko that she deserves to be abused because she looks like a man? Like, will you go tell Young Ma, someone who literally dresses in a masculine way, that she deserves to be a victim of violence because she dresses like a man? You guys have so much animosity and hate towards dark-skinned women. And literally, I am praying that Megan Thee Stallion is surrounded by people who love her and are supporting her right now. Because can you imagine what that is doing to her psyche? And that is sadly the situation for a lot of dark-skinned women. Whenever we come out about any type of violence towards us, they'll be like, oh, you're, oh, you're masculine. Oh, maybe it's because you are so aggressive. But you would not say that to light-skinned women. I know you guys wouldn't say that because there's a little example of a light-skinned woman who literally is terrifying, dangerous, and scary. And the person who I'm talking about is Krishan. Krishan and Blueface are in one of the most toxic relationships I've ever seen in my life. And literally every other week we'll see a, an article like, Krishan be Blueface with a bat. Krishan be Blueface with a house. Krishan ran over Blueface. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that even though Krishan literally fits into the stereotype of an aggressive black woman. You guys still idolize her, reminisce about how she used to be so pretty before she met Blueface, and literally treat her as a feminine dainty princess, even though she has fists that are stronger than Ronda Rousey. But when it comes to black women who don't even do stuff like this, you treat them as if they're the next up and coming MMA fighter. And it's just 
so obvious that you guys be colorist and how strong colorism is affecting the black community i'm really glad i made this video because i saw so many of y'all trying to justify the existence of reverse colorism and i just couldn't believe what i was seeing and i even asked my friend janiyah who happens to be light-skinned if she believed reverse colorism was a thing and she literally was like girl let's be so serious no and I'm really glad that I was able to get her commentary because I don't want it to come off as I hate light-skinned people because that's always the rhetoric that happens when dark-skinned women talk about their experiences in life. And I'm really glad that in my friend group, I'm the darkest one and I don't experience colorism from my friends. And I'm really glad that I just have a group of friends who have sense and empathy because if I had to deal with I don't know, people lighter than me saying that, oh no, Emma, your experience as a dark-skinned black woman isn't a thing. I don't think I could make it. I don't think I could make it. So thank you guys for watching up until this point of the video. It seriously helps a lot. If you liked my commentary, make sure that you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And make sure that you also hit the notification bell because I have a bunch of videos coming out in 2023. And give me your experiences of colorism in the comments. I really want to hear from you guys and I'll definitely see you guys in the next one. Bye!